Hi, Professor Dam here. I wanted to say hello and give you a tour through our course so you can see what I look like. You're going to be hearing my voice a lot in our videos. This is my at-home workspace, so this is where you can imagine me working when we're talking and learning together. I wanted to point out that I did put a copy of our schedule um, in my workspace. I recommend that you do that too. We have several weekly deadlines and I would hate for you to miss them. So maybe pasting or copy and pasting the the course schedule and taping it someplace strategic would be a good idea. Um, but now let me take you uh, through a tour of our course so I can explain a little bit about all the little pieces that go into learning staff with me. So once you are have entered our course, um, this is something you should see on our homepage. It might look a little different. Uh, I'm teaching several courses, so they all have different ticket numbers. So um, if you see something else up here, please don't worry. I'm just touring a different course, but they should all look the same. Um, I am teaching several courses. So if you email me to my Saddleback email, it would be helpful if you tell me what this number is here, because then I can go directly to your course and look up whatever it is you're asking about. If um, you email me from within Canvas email, then it will already stamp that number on your email so you don't have to worry about it but if you just email me from a different system which you're welcome to do um, it would help me if you had this number so that I could look up your records so when you come into our home page I'm just gonna run through each of these things and then as I run through them discuss the policies that are relevant to them so I, I think it is worth your time to make sure that you understand uh, all the things that go into this course because it's stats it's not going to be easy but hopefully we can do it together and if you understand how all these things are going to work um, it'll be easier so the first place you're going to go is our syllabus and kind of an orientation landing zone so um, there's policies in here i'll have you take the time to scroll through and see if there's anything in here that you needed to know i only require a very simple calculator and on the um, exams uh, there is a calculator provided on the exam page. However, you're welcome to use your own. I know that sometimes using your own calculator makes it easier. This is where you'll find our syllabus. I do encourage you to download it um, and save it to a, a Google Drive. I often have students requesting that I send them the syllabus several years later because the university needs it and um, I would hate for you to not be able to reach me for whatever reason and they make you take stats again no one wants to take stats again well I would like to take stats again but most people don't want to take stats twice so if you can save the syllabus this might be what you need if you end up ever at a university where they um, weren't sure about our course now if you transfer to anywhere in California you should be fine but sometimes students end up in Utah and Florida and places they never expected and uh, we don't have any um, written relationships with those schools so it would be good for you to have our syllabus um, so that you could show that you uh, had the rigor that they expect. Now I did have an error on our syllabus. Um, in previous years I had the testing window be from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. I have since decided to extend that just a bit from 3 to 10 p.m. and I thought I fixed all the areas in the course where it had listed the old times but there was um, it's still listed in the syllabus uh, with the with the 4 to 8 p.m. So I wanted to note that for you in case you saw that. Please know our exam times are now 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the Mondays listed in the in the schedule. And then um, through these tabs, again, I click. I encourage you to click through them and read them. Um, for the policies, it's basically you know how to reach me, what kind of calculator we need, um, how I grade assignments, if you need accommodations. Um, I grade assignments pretty rapidly, um, so you won't have to wait uh, too long. I, I try to go within a couple days of when they're submitted. And then if you need additional resources, those would be linked here. Okay. I should have mentioned um, when you're watching my videos, some of these videos are not going to be the most riveting, and I actually find I've, I enjoy watching them in rapid space. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go down towards the bottom of the page down here, and it'll have a little kind of gear icon, and you can put the speed in two times speed. I find I'm much more riveting in two times speed, so you might want to try it sometime. And then if it becomes a difficult part to understand, you can slow it down. All right, our calendar. So here, when we look at this course calendar, um, everything is linked in here, and so it has everything that you might need, um, and I find this is a really good landing zone. 
Um, you'll see here that I have the weeks listed here. Notice that I have the week starting on Tuesdays and ending on Mondays. I know that sounds a little funny, but it was for a particular reason. I wanted you to have enough time to learn all of the material and then test you at the kind of the last possible day. And so typically that would be a, the week would go from Monday to Sunday and I would test you on Sunday. But I don't like testing on Sundays because students might need access to computers at a library or a system like that and nobody's around on a Sunday. So I wanted you to have Mondays to take the tests. Um, and so hopefully that explains, but I, essentially what that means then is our week goes Tuesday to Monday rather than a typical Monday to Sunday. So the end of the week is Monday and they're always gonna have an assignment at the end of each week, which is Monday. So I'm gonna to skip to this week because it makes the most sense because this first week we're here, we're just kind of introducing ourselves and seeing what, what the course looks like. But in this um, week, we see it starts on a Tuesday and then we have the learning material here and it's linked here. So you can go right to the content of the learning material that I've made. And then we have the link for at the end of this, near the end of this week on Fridays, we have two homeworks due. Now this is the only time we'll ever have two homeworks due. We always usually will have one or sometimes we don't have any. But this first week, the homeworks are pretty straightforward. So I felt okay doing it, but we'll have two. They're covering two different topics, variables, and then the other one is graphs. And so those are due Fridays by midnight. Um, I don't accept late homeworks at all. The other things, you know, if the, like I have another assignment called a claim critique, I might accept that one late, but homeworks, I'm gonna drop three. And so they are the definitively due Fridays at roughly midnight. So um, just keep that in mind that I won't be accepting um, late homeworks, even if you have a real legit reason, because um, I'll just use one of the three drop for that. And then after you've learned all the material this week, then the last thing I have you do is post to a discussion board. And this is where we're gonna kind of discuss what we've learned. So the goal for this discussion board being at the end of the week is so that you can use all the material you've learned all week long and then really put it into good practice. So I will give you a question and the prompt will be, you'll reply to my prompt will be due on Mondays by 8 p.m. Now, um, I also want you to end up replying to a peer and uh, I have specific guidelines each week for what I want you to reply to them with, but I don't want you to have to do that on Monday as well. I'd like these to come in and then you can ponder them. So the replies for these discussion posts are gonna be due on Wednesday. So notice that kind of trickles into the next week. And um, so I find a lot of students just post on Mondays and then reply on Mondays and you're welcome to do that. But you're, the, the reply is not due until Wednesday so that you have a couple days to ponder. So again, the purpose of having this discussion at the end of the week is I want you to use all the material we learned during the week to make a really good response. And then you have a couple days to respond to other peers. And then we'll move into the next week, which starts on a Tuesday. And then you have this material and then you have the homework due on Friday and then the discussion due um, on Mondays. So that's the pattern. And then on the weeks where we have exam, you don't have a discussion due those weeks because you have an exam due uh, in that time. Uh, so I'm noticing this typo says 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. I am going to, as soon as we uh, finish this video, change this to 3 p.m. <laughs> but um, this is basically uh, a timeline of how the course will go. And if you like it this way, you can use the course calendar. However, some students like the module way, and I will show you what that looks like too. I do have a lot of students who wanna move ahead and, and kind of bust through all the assignments, and I really wanna discourage that. This material can be hard and I'd like to keep you paced with me, especially because students will send me an email and they'll say, hey, I have a question on this. And I think, oh, that's a great question. Let me share some additional materials with the entire class. So if you've jetted ahead two weeks and we're all still in this week and I'm reaching out and sending out more material, you're kind of now off kilter and not with us. So that's why I have locked the modules to, to only be released right before their start date. So if you wanted to bump ahead, it would be difficult because I won't, I won't release these things. I really wanna keep you in the same time frame with the rest of us. So I know some of you that's discouraging because um, you like to, to move ahead, but I actually have found that students who move ahead for this class, not necessarily for other classes, but for this class, it can be a detriment. So I don't want you to do that. Then the last um, item here is your claim critique. And that will be due, uh, it's kind of at the end. It's, it's a really fun project. 
Um, sometimes I have students who try to do it early and it's confusing if you try to do it before I've taught you all the material. So what I will tell you is you really have to have gotten to ANOVA before this claim critique will really make sense. So I ask that you please hold off until we finish this last or this exam three and then the claim critique will start to make sense. It'll be much easier to do. So let me go back to this home page. Now, I was talking about moving through the course, and so since I'm here, I would like to point out that there is this module link. So if I click on modules, these modules are a way in which many people organize their courses. And so the, they're chunked by the week. So this is almost like week one, week two. Now notice they're locked out, and that's because I don't want you moving ahead. But as soon as it's available, this will be available on August 24th at midnight. Um, so you can, um, access all of this material, but you'll see that all the course material is linked in here. So if you are a person that prefers modules, then this is a way you can access the material. And then when you click on the first module, there'll be an arrow at the bottom that'll help you complete all of the things until you reach the end of the module. So that's one way that speaks to a lot of people. So if I come back to this main landing page, you'll notice that I have all the lessons listed here. So these lessons are linked in the module, so you're not missing out. I just, all of us learn in different ways, so I just wanted to make them available in a multitude of ways. So we are currently in this module, so um, if I click on variables and graphs, it'll send me to the page that was in the module. And then these are ways for, let's say you know you learned something a few weeks back and you wanted to remember and so this is a quick way you can access the learning material. So I'm going to click on this one just to show you what they look like. So each week kind of has this look. We have the goals and I actually took very specific time to list exactly what I want you to get out of this class. This was not half haphazardly created. So you may want to just take a look and make sure did I get all of this information from these lessons. Then the lessons are kind of in this, um, I don't know, peachy yellow color, and it will be primarily made up of videos that I've made. There are videos from other resources, but most of them are from me. I put all of the video lessons into a single PDF file if you wanna print this up and take notes while you're watching the videos. Exams are open note, but not open computer. So it would be ideal if you could print them up so that you can flip through them during the exam because you're not gonna be able to flip through something on a computer. Um, if you don't have a printer, I would just get a notebook and take notes in your notebook um, uh, of the video lectures so that you can reference those. I will be asking you questions that if you have your notes available, it will be much easier to do. You shouldn't have to have your notes, but it will be much easier if you have your notes organized. So then um, for each week, I tell you roughly how long the videos are so you can kind of plan. I try to keep the videos under 25 minutes. Uh, you know, I understand shorter videos are better. Sometimes it's just harder to do because the way that to chunk the data, but I do list how long the video is before you start watching it. So you can kind of get a sense for, um, you know, what you need to plan for. And then I will describe to you what you really should be getting out of the video when you watch it. You can watch them right in this screen here. Uh, we'll start it, see how it's here. Um, now notice um, I can hit this settings button and I can make it so that I can watch myself in two times speed. So if you find that the material is going too slow, uh, go in two times speed. It's a little bit... So we're going to talk about scientific method. Ooh. What we're going to do is talk about what... And then you can also slow it down and you can put it in whatever speed you want. So if you don't like looking at it in this small view, then you can um, do full screen. You can watch it on your TV. You can um, copy the link and send it to um, you know another browser. So it's all organized here, but you're not limited to having to watch it in here. So then usually after all these videos, towards the bottom, I will offer any extra stuff. So if there's something that I'm like, wow, they don't need to know this, but I think it could help if something's feeling fuzzy, I will post at the bottom of this kind of an optional material. And then over here on the right will be a list of all the assignments that are kind of expected that week. And if it's not required, I'll let you know. Now, most of them will be required. It's just this first week. So here we have the icebreaker linked here. I do want you to read the chapter and here's the pages for the printed book. Then you have the um, homework, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
And then um, there's another reading I want you to do. Um, the, our book talks about SPSS a lot. You don't have to know SPSS. That's a software that we won't be using. We'll be using a different software. Now, I won't hurt you to read that part, but I'm not going to test you on it. And I don't want you to get confused if, if you find that there's extra material. And so this is the one week where we have two homeworks. So I have listed them both here. And then if you haven't completed the practice exam, using Proctorio, I would recommend you do it here. So each week kind of looks like this, where we talk about what we're going to do. Here's all the lessons and here's the assignments. So it can help you organize um, your week. Now I'm transitioning back here. Here is a link that talks about the textbook information. And um, some students have said, hey, do I need a hard copy? Do I need a, is a digital copy fine? Whatever will help you get uh, the material learned. The only thing I would say though is you're not going to have access to the computer version. So a print copy might be nice to flip through during the exams. Now I can tell you, having watched some people take the exams, very few people broke out their books. So um, I do ask you test questions that are from the book. I just didn't see a lot of people flipping through the books. Maybe it was because they were digital or for whatever, but um, this a peace of mind for you to know if you want to have a hard copy or um, just a digital rented copy. Um, both are fine for my purposes. And again, this book talks about SPSS. We're going to use a program called JASP. The reason I like to use JASP is because SPSS is expensive and JASP is free and it can run off the browser. So um, I will put relevant JASP guides in the weekly module content. But I also wanted you to have a landing zone where you could find them all at once. So here I have um, the tasks kind of split up. So here's just kind of installing JASP if you're going to install it to your computer. You can run it off a browser if, for example, you have a Chromebook and can't install JASP. I have all these links available to you. And then once we start running statistics, uh, I have videos on how to do very different statistics. So this is a main landing zone for you if you're having trouble with JASP and want to get some help. However, within each module where we're going to be using JASP, I will link the relevant material. Um, so you don't necessarily need to come here. Don't feel like you need to watch all these videos in one sitting. It's, this is kind of like a if you have a if you're stumped and have a question, come to this guide. Now homework are also listed in the modules. They were also linked in the course content, the lessons, but they're also linked here in case you want to find an easy landing zone. I want you to see that I've chunked them by material. So exam one material is going to cover these exam uh, homework. Exam two material is going to cover these homework. So it can just kind of help you see how we're chunking it. And then if you click on homework, now I have some important policies I want you to know about homework. So homework can be done. It says it's a quiz and that's just because um, Canvas doesn't have a homework function and I really wanted to have some interaction with you this way so I it's in the quiz format but it's not really a quiz so if you take the quiz uh, sorry if you take the homework don't call it a quiz <laughs> you'll notice that in the instructions it says that you can change your answers and return this to homework as many times as you want so until you submit the homework you can change your answers you and so I just want to pretend I'm gonna rapidly go oh I don't know what the I'm not even reading these right I'm just selecting stuff Da, 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 selecting random answers and then oh it's time for dinner I gotta go so I leave the page it says are you sure I say leave and now let's say I come back an hour later and I say resume quiz my answers will be saved see so you can come back and forth you can try to answer and then maybe go read the book a little bit or watch another video and then come back but once you submit it it's done, it's mine to grade. So do not submit until you are all done. Now you can do a second attempt to learn from, but you can't do that for the grading aspect. I will only grade the first submission. So I only allow you to do more attempts for kind of learning purposes. However, I find that doing a second attempt is maybe not necessary. I think the more important thing to do is look at the feedback I give you on the attempt that you did. So after you submit your homework, you're going to see I give very detailed feedback for every answer. So I don't have my wrong answers. Uh, I don't just make up funny stuff for my wrong answers. I make up wrong answers that are typical wrong answers. And then I can say, ah, I know what you did. You forgot da 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 da. So I will give very detailed feedback on all of these questions. So it's worth your time after you submitted your homework to come back and look at that feedback. If you don't do look at it right away, please look at it before the test because that's where all the meat is. 
Now, I used to grade homework on a typical way where the number of points you get is the number of points you get. Um, but then I found students really focusing on points and not on learning the material. And I really want you to focus on learning the material. And I hope that you've learned at this point in your life that making mistakes is how you learn. Mistakes are critical for understanding what you are doing wrong and, and learning from them. So I want you to feel welcome to make mistakes and learn from it. Um, so I've changed my homework style to now be pass fail. And my pass fail threshold is pretty low. You need to get a 60% or higher to pass. If you pass a homework, so you get 60% of the questions right, um, then you're gonna get full credit and that's six points. If you get, let's say 50% of the questions right, then you're gonna fail the homework and get zero points. And so that can feel harsh, but I'm only asking you to pass 60% of the homework. Um, and to relieve some of that harshness, I'm going to drop three homework. So we have 13 homeworks available in the class, but I'm only counting 10 of them. So that should relieve some of the pressure to pass, pass, pass everything, because you can fail three of them and it's not gonna affect your grade at all. Now we will use those three dropped for those that have failed. If you missed any, then that could be one of the dropped. And let's say you pass all 13, well, that's better for your brain, but I'm still only counting 10. So they don't count towards extra credit. Now I wanted Canvas to do this pass fail system and it didn't have the sophistication to do that. So the way I have uh, work around that issue is I make my first question this open-ended question because Canvas doesn't know how to grade open-ended essay questions. So I said, okay, Canvas, this one is worth six points and all the others are worth zero points. Then when I go in and manually grade your homework, I'm gonna see how many of these questions you got right and score it on those questions. This open-ended piece is just for you to tell me anything you want me to know. Um, students will often say, hey, number two is really confusing, I didn't understand that. And I use what you write here to help me launch additional material. If I send out to you, oh, I noticed a lot of people in the homework were confused about this, so let me explain that a little bit more. So um, you don't have to write anything in this box, um, but I do read everything I, I see here, and if you ask a question, I will answer it. So it will be worth going back to your homework comments and seeing what my answer was. And so this is where, when I'm grading homework, I, do, I give it six points or zero points. Now sometimes, depending on what system you're looking at, whether you're using your phone or a computer, and you can do your homework on your phone if you're out and about and want to do it that way. Sometimes Canvas will try to automatically give you a grade, and because it can't grade this essay question, it'll sometimes just default to giving you a zero, and then I think they hope you would understand that once I've graded it, it will be updated. And then I get emails from students saying, I just submitted the homework and I have zero, but I passed them all. And so I just want you to remember, I manually grade these. So if you submitted it at 2 a.m. on Thursday, I can guarantee you I'm not gonna grade it right away because I'm not gonna be up at 2 a.m. So you just have to be patient until I see that you've submitted it and then I grade it. But um, once you've submitted, you can automatically go right back in and look at all my feedback and see whether you passed it. You just have to have passed 60% of the questions. Now, sometimes um, there are a different number of questions, so it's not gonna always be the same. Um, so I'm only counting the questions that are of the content. So see how this homework has 10 questions? That means only nine of them are going to count. So I am gonna do 60% of nine questions. You have to get that right. So if you have any questions on homework, please let me know. Um, they're not easy. They're designed to really work your brain. My goal is to work you hard before the test so that the tests come through pretty straightforward. My test questions are not designed to be tricky. They're not designed to catch you. My homework questions are. I try to make the homework questions pretty intensive. They're not meant to be done by just sitting down and doing them. They're meant for you to open them at the beginning of the week and ponder them all week and explore them and see what I, oh, what is she asking for? Ooh. And then if you submit the homework and feel like you're really frustrated with me, then that feels like I've done my job. And that way, when you take the exams, then you're good to go and you know all the material and the exam's gonna be really straightforward. And I have asked a lot of students and they do find that that seems to be a fair representation. The exams are straightforward, the homeworks can be tricky. And again, you just have to pass 60% and we get to drop three, so that should take some of the pressure off. So speaking of exams, we have an interesting dynamic here because we're gonna be using Proctorio. 
And so Proctorio, hopefully you watched my video on it, um, but it's basically a remote proctoring device or a system to where they're going to watch you take the tests. They're going to record, and then if anything alerts them that they think may be an issue, then they tell me, hey, look at this person at this particular um, point, and then they will show me the video. So um, make sure that you practice with Proctorio, you can take this practice as many times as you want just so you can get used to it and mess with the settings. You might wanna remove your image from Proctorio so it's not staring at you. You might wanna try the calculator, the whiteboard. Um, this is here for you to feel comfortable with it. And then all of the rest of the exams will be uh, proctored the same way. So if you have any questions about exams, how they'll work, um, how Proctorio works, please reach out to me early so that we can get those concerns manage before the exam. We don't want to wait till the day of and then be scrambling. Um, the discussion boards are also linked here. I would like to orient you to the ability for you to introduce yourself and let us know who you are. And then this student question forum, usually this gets more utilized right before the test. So people will say, hey, has anybody um, noticed that uh, this link is it working or what did everybody get for the homework question blah 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 and so this is a place for you to ask questions um, colleagues can come in and answer I will also answer if it's something you need immediately answered I recommend you email me because I will see that faster than looking in the student question forum but this is just another place for you to kind of launch conversation and then as discussions become available they will be posted here so we have many more discussions but they're not available yet so they're only the two linked here because this one you can start to work on. I do make the claim critique available early because some students like to think about it. However, I, I would like you to know that that's not due um, for quite some time. And you'll notice that there's posts in here and that's because I posted some examples. Um, so I don't want you to feel that you're behind. Um, don't worry about this until after the third exam, but it is here if ever you want to look at it. All right, just a few more things to, to look over. Um, this is the description of the claim critique. We're going to do it in the discussion board so that we can all see. Essentially what I'm asking you to do is find a product that makes a claim. Ideally it's a product that you're interested in because it's easier to write about stuff that interests you. Let's say it's something that says it's going to make your eyelashes look longer. Then what you're going to have to do is talk about the claim the product is making and then the statistic you'd need to see to believe it. Well, I haven't taught you any statistics yet, so that's why it'll be really hard to answer that. But once we get through the first three exams, you'll have enough statistics to be able to, to kind of tackle this. So um, that will be later. Then you can click on this My Grades link to check out your grades. I update grades regularly. I And I am very, because I'm a statistician, I like to keep my data clean. So if you see that there's an error in there, please let me know ASAP. I like to keep everything meticulous so that you always know where you're standing and um, uh, what your points are. I do offer extra credit. Now, um, when we were before coronavirus, there was extra credit events for you to attend on campus. And so I would have linked them in here. Um, if some reason, you know, maybe Zoom lectures become available, this calendar will become updated with, oops, with events. But right now you'll see there's nothing going on. Um, but I will be offering other kinds of things, things to do at home. And I will be putting those in the announcements. So at this particular point, I don't have anything. If the, if the school offers events that you can do remotely, they will be listed in this calendar. Um, but if there's something you can do from home, I will um, send that in the announcement. So just keep an eye on that. I allow you to earn up, up to nine points extra credit in the course, three points per event. So there's gonna be three events that you can do. Now I'll offer many more than three, but, um, but you can cap out at three. Okay, so that's the general gist of the course. Over here in the to-do list will be things that you, you can use this to help guide you as what's coming up. You can use the systems calendar. You can use my course calendar. And if I see that you haven't done the homework and we're getting pretty close to the deadline, I start sending out emails to people and saying, hey, don't forget, we've got that coming up and I don't accept late homework at all. Well, I look forward to learning with you online. Please send questions so I can update everyone in the announcements of any questions you may have that um, they, everybody else might benefit from knowing the answers to. Thanks and good luck.